All right. So I mentioned we're going to learn how to quantify all that stuff that we learned in the last video. Um, positive, negative, strong, weak, all that stuff. Well, here's how we're going to do it. And I'm, I'm bet your eyes are going right into that middle. <laughs> you're looking at that formula probably as soon as this video started and your eyes are bulging and you're freaking out, checking your glasses. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let's go one thing at a time. So correlation exists between, again, not causation. Correlation is not causation. Doesn't mean something causes, just means they're related. Correlation exists between two variables when the values of one variable are somehow associated with the values of the other variable. Again, temperature and cricket chirpings could be one thing that's correlated. Um, turns out that the... Um, the number of movies that Nicolas Cage stars in and the number of pool drownings are also correlated. One doesn't cause the other, but it turns out that uh, there's a pretty high correlation between those two, just by random chance. Or is it? Probably by random chance, but those are examples of some correlations. So we can find a linear correlation coefficient. We're going to call that R. So this R, this number, uh, is a way of measuring the strength and the sign of the linear correlation. So this R value is going to tell us, do we have positive correlation, slope going up, or negative correlation, slope going down? Is a correlation strong? All the data points are really close together. Or is the correlation weak? The data points are further apart. R is going to tell us all about that. Just some number going to give us a lot of information about these scatter plots. So the formula is really, really messy. Okay. Um, just adding up all the differences between the X's and their sample means multiplied by the differences between the Y values and their sample means. And uh, we have N minus one degrees of freedom and we'll also divide by their individual standard deviations. We could do this with a spreadsheet. We have all the tools to set this up, just like we did standard deviation in unit four. We're not going to though, okay? Uh, what we're going to do instead is use technology, which we'll do in the next video, using GeoGebra to find this correlation coefficient. Well, let's introduce this a little bit um, first. So some things about this R, this core linear correlation coefficient. R is always, between zero, sorry, is always between negative one and one. Okay, always between negative one and one. So on this little number line, if we think of you know how R works, right? It's, it's not really an arrow, right? The arrow is for the number line, but let's say that uh, you know the biggest or smallest I can get is always negative one or one. There are no units for R, so you'll, you'll be happy about that. I always ask about, oh, what's the mean and standard deviation? Include units in your answer. Well, there are no units for R. It's a coefficient, all right? It's a number that we're multiplying things by. Uh, and the closer R is to negative one or one, the stronger the association. So on the outsides, right? If we're over here, strong correlation. Over here, it's also strong correlation. It, how big R is, the magnitude of R. Really close to negative one, strong correlation. Really close to positive one, also strong correlation. But then it's weak near the middle. And in fact, there's no correlation if it were zero. All right. It's, it's weak if it's near zero. So again, some examples of strong Correlation would maybe be R equals 0 0.9, no, 0 0.8, uh, negative 0 0.9. These are all examples of strong correlation. But weak correlation would be something like you know, 0 0.2 or negative 0 0.1. These are very, very weak. Okay? And the sign of R, positive or negative, is the direction of association. Everything over here is positive correlation. And everything over here is negative correlation. So it tells us two things. 
positive or negative, depending on whether it's positive or negative, and strong or weak. The further away it is, the stronger it is. And specifically, we have these kind of edge cases. If R equals one, that's perfect correlation. That's perfect positive correlation. All data points, all uh, data points, did I become Italian? All data points are on a line. It's as strongly correlated as you can get. Every single point is on that line. That's what an R value equaling one means. In reality, we almost never get an R value equal to one. Same with R equals negative one. Again, that's just a negative sloped line, but it's perfect correlation. Okay, we're gonna, in the next video, we're gonna look at a couple examples and work on these things. But in general, conceptually, this is what R represents. There's a formula to calculate it. We'll use technology. And uh, you can look at this little graph to kind of interpret what different R values represent. And again, they're just ways of describing these two aspects of graphs. So you can even go back, right? Positive means R value is positive. Negative, R value is negative. Strong correlation has a big absolute value, right? Absolute value of R is either is big, so that means it's close to positive one or close to negative one. Weak correlation would be R close to zero. It's ways of updating our previous one if you wanted to. That's what R has to deal with. And again, we're only going to be worrying about linear correlation for this. Have a nice day.